Tonight, top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Voters doubt PM can get a better EU deal. Clear European Union rules for public passenger transport by rail and road. And Turkey to renegotiate customs union with the EU. Details from the Court of Auditors, plus national parliaments should have more EU powers. Well, well, round two of the political punch-up between Nigel Farage and Nick Clegg has certainly put the cat amongst the pigeons. Earlier today, we hosted a special live show reviewing the debate and analysing the comments. More on this later in the show. It's Thursday, the 3rd of April. Glad you're here with us. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Voters doubt the PM can get a better EU deal. Almost three in four people have no confidence that David Cameron will be able to deliver on his promise to claw back powers from the EU. A poll has found that just 20% think the Prime Minister can get a better deal with Brussels, while 72% do not. Some 51% think other members will block reforms, while 26% doubt the Prime Minister's skills as a negotiator. And almost one in four suspects he wants to stay in the Union even if Britain does not achieve a better deal. The findings, which come from a major piece of research commissioned by Tory peer Lord Ashcroft, cast doubt on the electoral effectiveness of Mr Cameron's pledge of an in-out referendum by 2017. Of the 20,000 people questioned, around two-thirds said other countries benefited more from the EU than the UK. Well, certainly the key leaders in Europe, Mr Barroso, Rumpoy, Vivian Redding and Martin Schulz, are all driving for greater integration, more control or democracy as they call it, and they have no intention of allowing the UK to renegotiate terms, which of course would require all the other 27 members to agree as well. Clear EU rules for public passenger transport by rail and by road. The European Commission has given guidance today on EU rules for public passenger transport services by rail and by road. The rules determine how public authorities across Europe may contract for the provision of public transport services by rail, metro, tram or bus. How to award these contracts and how to compensate for public service obligations. By providing guidelines on key provisions of the rules, the Commission is now enhancing legal certainty for all actors in public transport. European Commission Vice President Sim Carlos, responsible for mobility and transport, said the public transport sector needs clear rules to be competitive and to provide us all with modern mobility solutions. We have listened very carefully to where clarification was needed and these new guidelines provide the clarity and will enhance legal certainty for all public transport actors in the EU. This regulation, EC number 1370-2007, has major importance for the organisation and financing of public transport services across the EU. Turkey to renegotiate customs union with the EU. Turkey will bring up the customs union deal for negotiation with the European Union by June, the economy minister has announced. The move comes from Ankara's mounting frustration with the accord, particularly after Brussels recently kicked off the free trade deal process with Washington. By June, we are going to reopen for negotiation the customs union agreement to which no sovereign independent state should agree. The foreign minister said on March 23rd, speaking with local businessmen in the southern province of Badur. I was with the economy and trade ministers and delegations of 28 EU member countries. I pressured these men about the customs union. We met three times and we're now going to get together for a fourth time, he said. Hmm. Now, it's interesting that a tiny nation like Iceland can negotiate a suitable and mutually agreeable trading agreement with China. And yet Turkey and the apparently trade-orientated European Union can't reach an accord. Hmm. Why is that? 
Well, we believe it's because these EU trade agreements are not free trade agreements. They're always dependent on accession negotiations and ultimately control and compromise of national sovereignty. In a nutshell, the EU agreements simply come with too many strings attached. In our legislation section, our research team have pulled up the article Court of Auditors. The European Court of Auditors, as a professional audit institution, must apply, among others, international audit standards applicable to the public sector. The European Court of Auditors was established by the 1975 Budgetary Treaty to audit EU finances and as the EU's external auditor, it contributes to the improvement of the European Union's financial management and acts as the independent guardian of the financial interests of EU citizens. Article 286 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union stipulates that members of the European Court of Auditors must be chosen from among persons who belong to or have belonged in their respective member state external audit bodies or who are especially qualified to hold the office in question and whose independence is beyond doubt. The article reports on the problems that have arisen as a consequence of the current method of appointing new members of the ECA. Of the problems that always receives the scrutiny of the media is the European Union's accounts, which seem to fail scrutiny of the Audit Commission with the consistency of a Swiss watch. National Parliaments should have more EU powers. National parliaments should have a greater role in European Union decision-making, a committee of British lawmakers said on Monday, including working together to propose new legislation or changes to existing European law. Under pressure from Eurosceptics in his Conservative Party as well as the UK Independence Party, British Prime Minister David Cameron has promised to reshape Britain's ties with the EU, then to give Britons a vote on whether to leave the 28-nation bloc if he wins a national election next year. National parliaments being able to work together to block unwanted European legislation was among areas of planned reform he set out earlier this month. <laughs> well, well, as we saw in last night's Europe debate, Mr Clegg thinks EU laws represent 7%, Mr Farage believes it's more than 70%, this House of Lords committee report is now looking to find ways to block unwanted European legislation. So what this tells us is that whether it's 7% or 70%, whether it's potatoes or tomatoes, the UK government is powerless to stop it. Well, frankly, let's call the whole thing off. Today in our video library, we have a recording of our special live show, Table Talk. Following round two of the Farage versus Clegg debate on Europe, the unit team will be conducting an analysis and review of the questions asked, the answers given, and we'll be using our vast archives of EU legislation and news to evaluate the points made and answer your questions on Europe and the European Union. Presented by Trevor Coleman, MEP, and myself, we well, certainly found the conversation evocative and stimulating. But what do you think? Did you enjoy the show? Would you like us to do further shows in this format? Please do get in touch with us and let us know. Now remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, or one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at the E unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.